All right, so for primary math, your first theme folder involves number concepts, and I want to go through the idea of teaching number concepts. And remember from last time, we took our seven steps of the teaching progression and kind of adjusted them, adjusted them for teaching primary. And something that I want you to keep in mind when you're teaching primary, <coughs> it's kind of like cooking from what? Scratch. scratch. You can't just pull out the box, the mix, out of the cupboard, dump it together, just add water, just add eggs. No, you're going to be teaching from scratch. So because you're teaching from scratch, we are going to begin with basic number concepts and basic place value, but teaching from scratch. What do I mean when I say teaching from scratch? I mean that you have to, first of all, assume nothing. You have to assume that they do not have any prior knowledge to which you can link it. So you have to introduce everything. Assume they know nothing. Inter you know what I mean by that. <laughs> assume they know nothing, and so you have to introduce everything. They don't really, by that nothing, they don't really have any prior math knowledge. So it's very difficult when we're dealing with proceeding from the known to the unknown. We don't have a whole lot of known to proceed from. So you have to introduce. How do you introduce objects? I just gave it away. How do you introduce concepts? By bringing in objects. Okay, so just as an example, having nothing really to do with number concepts, but think about teaching from scratch, because I want to start with this. Think about teaching measurements from scratch. What do you have to bring in? Objects. And where do you start? You still have to attempt to do familiar, start at the familiar, proceed from the familiar to the unfamiliar. So if you're teaching metric measurements from scratch, you're going to start with a dozen. Why? It's familiar to them from food, speaking of cooking. <coughs> dozen eggs, a dozen cookies, right? A dozen is a common uh, amount in uh, food, especially the dozen eggs. And you have a very cheap ob object that you can bring into class, which is a carton of eggs. Probably don't want to bring the eggs, but a carton. And you can work with the unit dozen. And so every time you talk about there's eggs in here, how many eggs are in there? There's 12 eggs, so that's one dozen. You introduce the idea of units. What would be the next thing where you could really start introducing units that you could bring in from the kitchen? Too far. A gallon of milk. Oh, no liters. Stay away from the metric system right now. They're familiar, um, especially think about maybe they have for breakfast. They're going to, maybe they're going to have eggs for breakfast. They're going to be familiar with the dozen. Or they probably have cereal for breakfast. So you can start with gallon as your first real measurement. You're starting from scratch. That's going to be done in kindergarten, right? But where does it have to be reintroduced? First grade. All right, from, so you can start with your liquid measurements because those are going to be the most familiar. They know what a gallon of milk is. And then you can proceed to quarts. And then you can proceed, get further and further, and you can use actual measuring things from the kitchen. Cup, pint, okay, because then you can use food to help you get those units across. That's what I mean by teaching from scratch. What's the first unit of length that you're going to bring in and introduce? A ruler to introduce the foot. You can even take a saw and cut the, a wooden ruler into inches. So 
the idea here is you are teaching from scratch. That means you assume they know nothing and you introduce, mostly because there's not a lot of things you can relate it to. So as you're teaching from scratch, first of all, remember they know nothing. You must introduce with objects. Second idea here, there are three areas. We're teaching from scratch. There are three areas that, three types of topics that you teach. Um, let me put that over here. The concrete, the abstract, and in between are the semi-concrete. Mentioned this briefly on Friday. So when you are teaching from scratch, you must stay in the realm of the concrete. Something that they can see. You can't just talk about an inch. You have to show them an inch. You can't just talk about a cup. You show them a cup. All right, so when you're teaching in primary, you have to, you're teaching from scratch. So you have to assume they know nothing and you have to introduce with objects. Those are called manipulatives, right? And then the second idea is you wanna stay in the realm of the concrete. That also involves using manipulatives. Concrete objects, okay, concrete involves objects and so on that they can actually see. So when you're teaching numbers in kindergarten, you are setting the foundation for first grade. And then when you teach first grade, you have to go back often to the kindergarten concrete. So when you're teaching from scratch, first of all, remember they know nothing. You are introducing brand new things. You're going to introduce with objects. We call those manipulatives. And then secondly, you're going to stay in the realm of the concrete. What is concrete? The concrete are actual objects that the students can see, handle, and understand. Concrete involves actual objects at primary level <coughs> that the students can see, touch, or manipulate, handle, see, handle, and then understand. Semi-concrete is when we use symbols to represent the concrete. And eventually the symbols become themselves concrete. For example, the number three. That's a symbol. What does that mean? It corresponds to three. So we have to relate that to three objects. And then there's the abstract. When you think abstract, you want to think algebra. In algebra, we use a letter to represent a number. Right? And then we do, we put an expression together using letters. That's abstract, just in general. So remember when you are teaching from scratch, you have to stay in the realm of the concrete, all right? And then number two, you will have to establish the semi-concrete. This is done at primary. And fourthly, this even applies to basic operations. This even applies to basic operations. I mentioned subtraction. You have to start with, last on Friday, you have to start with the concrete. You have to bring in, let's just say pencils, eight pencils. That's concrete. They can see it, they can handle it, they can understand that there's eight things there. But that's also based on their counting. Okay? Teaching first grade math would be a challenge because maybe some of your first graders didn't even go to kindergarten. 
Okay, so you have to start from scratch, scratch, scratch. You're not just pulling out the BizQuick or the cake mix out of the cupboard. Okay, you're getting together the eggs and the flour and you're mixing together dry ingredients and then the wet ingredients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot more work and thought. A lot more of an art than me, for example, going to make pancakes, right? Saturday morning, what do I do? I grab the Aunt Jemima complete. So all I have to add is water, not even eggs, okay? So it's a totally different mindset. And so you want to approach it as teaching from scratch, all right? Even with the basic operations. Example, subtraction. I have to start with concrete objects. I have to, um, and Mrs. Brader is the expert on this, okay? I have to bring in eight objects. If I'm gonna teach eight minus one, eight, the eight family, eight or whatever, I could, I wouldn't start with eight, but let's, I just picked up eight. I had to bring in my eight pencils, right? And then I have to, if I wanna teach eight minus one, one. This is semi-concrete, but it's still using symbols. So I have to relate that semi-concrete to the concrete. I have to take those eight pencils physically in my hand and actually take my hand, it's a manipulative, pull one of the pencils out, sit it over here and say, what is eight? Take away one. And then what do you do with my bundle of pencils? I count them physically. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, left. Do you see what I mean? So even with your basic operations, you have to establish the concrete and then you have to relate the semi-concrete to the actual objects. And then borrowing is even worse. Okay, borrowing is the second grade concept. A little bit in first grade, not so much. First grade is, isn't gonna really do that. They're gonna carry and so forth. And all of those things relate to what we're talking about today, and that is place value and number concepts. All right, so let's talk about number concepts. All right, so we're going to, the whole time we're teaching our primary concepts, we are going to think it, the idea, the theme is we're teaching from scratch. Okay, this is one thing for me that I think is difficult. All right, it's much easier to build on a foundation. Um, the other thing is I'm thankful that I never had to homeschool my children. And the reason is kind of the opposite of other people's reasons. A lot of people say, what am I going to do when I have to teach them algebra? I can't do algebra. What am I, to, what am I going to do when I have to teach some of the upper math and I have to do science? Well, I'm not worried about the upper math and science. I would have been worried about teaching them how to read. Right? How important is that? And teaching them what we're talking about right here. Teaching them math from scratch. Okay? Some students are intuitively thinkers and they pick up on numbers very quickly, many do not. So it's your job as the primary teacher to keep that idea, I'm teaching from scratch, and keep going back to the concrete. Keep bringing things to class, using manipulatives, teaching them to understand what subtraction means, what addition means, because that's, you've got to relate that semi-concrete back to the concrete and that's done with manipulatives. Remember the concrete basically involves objects that you can what? See, handle, then understand. All right, so number concepts. Keeping in mind that we're teaching from scratch, where do we begin with number concepts? Okay, we're gonna begin with relating the semi-concrete to the concrete. So we begin with number one, number recognition. I have three objects. This is kindergarten. May need to be done in first grade. I have three objects. I have to relate the idea of one, two, three objects, 
through counting, right, to the symbol three. So number recognition that involves relating the number symbol to the counting of actual objects. So number recognition, relating the number symbol, which is semi-concrete, maybe a little abstract if you're a first grader, <laughs> or relating the symbol for three by the counting of the actual objects. Three means there's three things present. That's number recognition. Along with number recognition, we have to teach proper number formation. So that's part of number recognition, so that they are writing and recognizing the correct form of the number three. Okay, I'm saving that for Mrs. Brader. Teach you number formation. All right, so number recognition, we're going to relate the symbol three, or whatever number symbol, to the actual object through counting. Then we have to learn how to write the symbols correctly. A third thing that we have to do for number recognition is associate the English word uh, that goes with it. Three, three, three. Okay, so number recognition begins with the concrete. We're going to relate the symbol three to the actual objects, three objects by counting. Then we will teach them the proper formation of the symbol three, and then we will associate it with the English word three. Note to self. No fingers allowed. Refrain from using your fingers and allowing them to use their fingers from the very beginning. Say, I got built-in manipulatives right here on my hands. What's Spanish for hands? What's that? Manos? Same root, seems like. Manipulative, having the idea of something you can hold and maneuver in your hand. Okay, no fingers allowed. Your, don't, allow, don't use your fingers. I know they're right there. And don't allow your students to use them because what's going to happen? They're going to start using them for a lot of stuff it's from the very beginning. No fingers allowed. Note to self, no fingers allowed. Objects are necessary. Because we're teaching from what? Scratch. But don't, don't use the fingers. Okay. I've seen fifth graders pulling out the fingers. Okay. I've helped some of my Sunday school kids from time to time going out to visit them. They pull out, the, when they find out that I'm a math teacher, they pull out their math page or they want to show me their homework or whatever, which is good. But what am I seeing them using? Fingers. No fingers allowed from the very beginning. Did anybody in here ever crutch a little bit on their fingers? Okay. That's because yes, we begin in the concrete, we begin with manipulative, but do we stay here? No. So no fingers allowed. So the first thing we're dealing with our number concepts that we are teaching from scratch is number recognition. Next, counting. Same thing here, before we even go any further. No fingers allowed. Do you want to maybe begin with fingers? I would just stick with objects, okay? This is kind of unrelated, but it kind of reminds me of um, having a pacifier or whatever you call it for your baby versus letting them suck on their thumb. You know, some, oh, there's always disagreement on raising children in little details like that. No pacifier. Well, I can take the pacifier away. It's a little hard to take the thumb away. Okay, kind of that idea. But does it make sense to you? Yes, you can. 
people can count you can count with your fingers but I really would completely avoid the finger issue altogether so that they're not sucking on their thumbs proverbially when they're in fifth grade and they have to do times okay so no still no fingers allowed counting we're going to count by ones from the pre-kindergarten kindergarten era so we're not really going to do a lot of counting by ones or fives or tens just at the beginning of first grade okay um, but we do do a lot of counting in kindergarten, first grade, even in second grade. So counting begins in the pre-K times with counting by ones. Many toddlers are taught by their parents how to count. Hopefully not with their fingers. All right. But then we will be counting by fives. After we count by ones, we count by tens actually. Why? Place value. And then we count by fives. And then we go to twos and threes. Counting. First of all, we're going to count by ones. And that's pretty much before first grade. Then by tens. Then you'll notice that the kindergartners will also count by hundreds. So we're going to begin with the place value counting. Ones, tens, hundreds. What does that go with? Place value, ones, tens, hundreds. And then in first grade and second grade, we will progress to the fives, followed by the twos, followed by the threes. So we're, we're, we're doing different counting. So I think it's important to think of this from scratch also. Ones, tens, hundreds, which is your place value counting, and then your fives, your twos, and then your three, threes, which is your simple prep for multiplication tables counting. It's a lot harder to count by threes and threes is done in second grade. So two, five starts first. It's easy to count by fives. We use that for clocks, right? Counting helps us learn other basic concepts. And then we'll count by twos, that's easier, and last by threes. So counting. Purpose of counting. The first purpose of counting is teaching and reinforcing place value. When we count by ones, we're going through the ones place till we get to a certain spot, right? And then when we count by tens, we're counting. It's, it's, it's a setup for place value, counting through by the tens and then hundreds. Okay, so that's the foundation of place value. The second purpose for counting is multiplication table prep, beginning with fives. Because then we can relate that five times zero, five times one. Well, five times zero is a separate animal. We don't count zero, five. We don't start with zero. All right, but five times one, five times two, et cetera. Prep for multiplication tables at the end of second grade. All right, counting. So counting is used for prep for place value, prep for multiplication. Last thing about counting. Counting is a temporary skill along the same lines of not using your fingers. Should we have to count through stuff in our mind? Eventually, no, we want to transition to the multiplication <coughs> tables, even though they are based on counting by twos for the time, two times tables, counting by threes for the three times tables, and so forth. So counting. So we began with number recognition. We also do counting. And then we begin with numbers themselves. Reading numbers. And then a reading numbers, of course, is related to counting. But after you get to 10, you have different words. The teens 
are words that have to be learned. Eleven. What is that? It's not like 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Right? 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then back to 31. That's place value number. So we have to learn how to read numbers. Yes, of course, we have to read three. We have to have our number recognition. But then we also have to learn the team names. 11 is a unique word that doesn't fit a place value scheme, does it? 12, another unique word that doesn't fit the number scheme. So we have to teach it through counting. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, but especially 11, 12, right? It's not one teen or two teen, it's 11, 12, 13, we're starting to get to the ordinal, 14, we've gotten out of that. We don't say three teen either. But then once we get to 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, we're still using teen instead of 10. So those numbers have to be taught through counting. Okay. All right. Are you going to really introduce how to spell 19? No, not so much. Not in first grade. Okay. Then we will teach them the reading numbers using the place value setup. That begins at 21, doesn't it? 20, 21, and then the place value setup. You understand what I mean by place value setup? The 20s all repeat 21 through the ones place, and then 31 through the ones place, etc. So we have to teach the reading of numbers. We have to especially teach the teens because they don't follow the place value format. Then we introduce and teach the place value format. All right, then which is the last thing, we will relate the reading of numbers to the place value system. So with our number concepts, we're teaching from scratch. Number recognition, counting, the reading of numbers, especially beginning with the teens, and then the place value, 21 and up. All right, then we have to add place by place, but we're gonna do that after doing, after doing um, place value. Okay, so number recognition, counting, the reading of numbers, that kind of goes with some number recognition in there as well. Then we will do place value. I'm going to come back to place value separately. Then we will do um, order. Order begins with the before and after number. How do we teach before and after numbers? We have to relate it to something they know. We have to teach the familiar by showing it and linking it back to the unfamiliar. What's the word? It starts with a T. Tether, right? So what are we going to tether our before and after number teaching to? Counting, right? So we have to teach before and after. And they have to understand that. Then secondly, we will progress to greater than and less than, and the symbols. That's pretty abstract, isn't it? And this will come later. Greater than and less than, second grade. Before and after is first grade. All right, so our number concepts that we will teach from scratch in um, elementary include, or in primary, excuse me, number recognition, Counting, the reading of numbers, number order, which includes before and after number, progressing to the abstract greater than and less than symbols. Finally, then, we will also teach rounding. In second grade, we will teach them how to round numbers, which is an introduction to the concept of estimation. So rounding, first of all, is an introduction to the concept of estimation. Secondly, 
It involves one of the first step-by-step -step procedures for you to teach your primary students. Remember, primary students do not multitask. Primary students do not do well doing a sequence of steps. But rounding involves steps. They have to know the rule. They have to know which number to look at. They have to know the rule, and then they have to do the step. <coughs> Remember, five or more, round up and add a zero. Four or less, drop and add a zero. Okay, so rounding is a number concept that we will complete by second grade. But you have to teach rounding from scratch. I'm telling you, I had a hard time teaching from scratch. It was actually worse than cooking from scratch. <laughs> Okay? All right. Place value. Place value is going to kind of be the main math concept for today. Place value. One of the things I'm going to have our guest lecturer show you is how to teach place value using manipulative. I just erased it, but place value has to begin with the concrete. Okay, um, we've got place value cups, you've got place value containers, place value you will be teaching from scratch. Okay, so um, first of all, with place value, the part that I'm going to teach you with respect to place value is understanding place value at the college level. Let's understand place value before we try to teach it from scratch, okay? Um, so place value at the college level. So with place value at the college level, we need to understand the, I don't know, theoretical. How about, you ready for some math theory? The, the aspects behind place value and how it actually works, okay? The, um, I don't think it quite rates as math theory, maybe it does. But the foundation of place value, we're talking college level, is called base 10. If you're familiar with exponents, for example, if we go back to something that you're familiar with, you're probably familiar with maybe let's do 2 cubed. 2 is called the base. It is the factor that we are repeating. 3 is called the exponent, right? And that tells us how many repetitions of the base. So I am using this word, base, um, not, as, not in the context of foundation, but I'm using it in the context of exponents. So our place value system is on base 10, okay? That means 10 is the base, and then we will have different exponents. So 10 is going to literally be the base of each place. This means that every place is 10 times bigger than the place before it. 10 times bigger than the place before it. And vice versa. 10 times smaller than the place after it. Base 10. Place value is base 10. So is the metric system. Okay? Which is why the metric system involves only moving the decimal point. No computation. No multiplying by 12 or multiplying by 4 or whatever the unit involves. So place value is literally on base 10. Okay, so each place is a different power of 10. This would be the powers of 2. All right, literally 2 to the 0 power, 2 to the first power, maybe we shouldn't start there. A little more math theory, right? 2 squared, 2 cubed, 
2 to the 4th. So these are the powers of 2. That's the terminology. So 2 to the 1st power means 1 factor of 2. 2 factors of 2. Or 2 repetitions of 2. 3 repetitions of 2. Right? 4 repetitions of 2. How many repetitions of 2? None. And so by definition, any base to the 0 power is 1. Okay? Those are the powers of 2. So what I'm telling you is that the place value system is on base 10. So every digit is a power of 10. All right, now we'll start with just numbers that are greater than 1, the whole numbers. Okay, the whole numbers, um, place value, we have the, the main part of place value is called the units period. And this is where we begin with place value is the units period. Then we'll expand to the thousands, the millions, and so forth. But the foundation of the place value system is the units period. You remember from learning how to write big numbers that you put a comma every three to divide it into periods. Well, the first period, the units period, is the ones place, the tens place, and then the hundreds place, right? Okay, so the ones place is literally 10 to the zero power. <coughs> the tens place is 10 to the first power. Each place into which we'll put a digit, so then each digit will be a power of 10. Do you know the difference between the word place and the word digit? There are 10 symbols that are digits, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 symbols, digits, okay? So then every digit we put in the hundreds place is 10 times bigger than the tens place, which is 10 times bigger than the ones place. So base 10 means that every place corresponds to a power of 10. All right, so then we're talking about place value. So then the value of the digit depends on the place, right? So let's take 347. What is the value of the 7? Seven? 7, because it's in the 1's place. It is literally equal to 7 times 10 to the 0 power, or just 7 times 1, which is 7. What is the value of the 4? It's yes, and it's equal to 4 times 10 to the first power. And its value is 40. What is the value of the 3? 3 times 10 squared. What's 10 squared? 300. It's, it's 100, so 300, yes. Do you understand what we mean when we say that place value is on base 10? A little math theory for you, since you're a college student, not a first grader. Okay, um, show this to the seventh graders and their eyes glaze over, kind of what yours are doing right now. Okay, but you need to understand place value and where it comes from. Did you know that there is base two mathematics? And they put the little two behind it. So 347, the value of the seven is 14. The value of the three is, I mean the four is? That's still base 10. We're not on base 10. It's just eight. So, all right. Just to be clear, we're not going to do base two mathematics and base five mathematics. It's in the seventh grade book, by the way, base two. Um, I've only ever really done base 2 and base 5. And it's, I, I don't really know of any applications, so it was kind of, I felt like I was just straining my brain for no reason. But 
the base 10 is what we, our whole system is based on. And that's why we get the word, that's where we get the word decimal. Okay, base 10. So then with um, what you need to be able to do for my number concepts quiz is you need to be able to work with place value then at a college level. So if we take our 347 number, there's different ways we're going to write it. Okay? The first way that we write it is in standard number form. So when the book's asking you to put it in st standard form or number form, you write the number. You also have to put it in word form. So this is 300 40, running out of space, 47. Now remember, reading our numbers, this is a compound word, 47. It must be hyphenated. Then we have to write it um, in expanded form. And that's where we spell out the values. So 347 is equivalent to 300 plus 40 plus 7 using our base 10. And even more college level and even more directly related to the idea of base 10 is exponential form. That would be 3 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10 plus 7 times 1 or 10 zero power. So each digit is literally a power of 10 because the place value system is literally on base 10. Okay, so we have standard number form, we have word form, we have expanded form, and then exponential form, okay? Let's take a bigger number. Of course, bigger numbers, will, as you go up in grades, you will be expanding to more digits and so forth, and you'll be going to the thousands period. So then a larger number is going to be divided into three, three digit or three place periods. Beyond this we have the millions period, but let's just go to the thousands period. Can you put this in word form? We would write 4,000. Do not say, that's a 7. Do not say and 72. What do we use and for later, later on? The decimal. So don't use it. So 4,072. You may also in your word form put a comma so that you don't have all these words running together. So 4,000, I'm sorry, 400, sorry, 472. We're out of space here. Get rid of that. 472, then the period name, 1,000, right? 472,000, comma, 300, got distracted with the and, 365, okay? Expanded form, 400,000, 70,000, 2,000. Typically now when there's only four digits, you don't put the comma. Plus, where did we go? 300, plus 60, plus 5. Are you ready for exponential form? This is the 
one's place, right? That's how you write one in exponential form. This is the tens place. This is the hundreds place. What goes here? Here and here. Ten to the third. Ten times ten times ten is a thousand. This is ten to the fourth. This is the system is organized by exponent, just like it's organized with these zero placeholders. In fact, how many zeros here? So this is four times ten to the fifth plus seven times ten to the what? One, two, three, four. Plus two times ten to the one, two, three. Plus three times ten to the second power squared, two. Plus six times ten, or ten to the first power, plus five times one, ten to the zero power. Everything is literally on base ten. Do you know what that means? Each place is a literally a power of 10. Okay, so um, another way that we have to expand besides going into higher periods is throwing in zeros. So let's address zero <coughs> as placeholders. What is that number? It's going to be four, what? Hundred. Because we deal with this number as a unit, and then we tack on the period name. This number as a unit is 407, right? So 407, tack on the period name. What's left? Three. Three. And it's in the unit, units period. I guess we could put a comma. So this is going to be four times ten plus seven times ten plus three times ten. Which power? Which power? Four. What? Three. Which power? Five. Five. Or 400,000 plus 7,000 plus 3. Okay? So make sure when you get expand, when you expand then into, when you expand into more places and then you have to go period by period. We have to teach our students how to read these later on, not in primary. But what about you? Remember how to read large numbers. <clears throat> what about a four period large number? After millions is billions. So we have four periods here. So we read the number as it stands alone. It's five. Five what? Five what? Billion. Then we proceed to the next period, the millions period, and we read the number, deal with the number as it stands alone. It is what as it stands alone? 310, then tack on the, the period name. Three hundred ten what? Million. So when we're getting to the bigger numbers, we go period by period and read it as a unit. Five billion. Three hundred ten million. What's next? As it stands alone? 
It's 36, not 360. 36, what? Thousand. thousand. Left? 501 units, period, so no name. Okay, so remember your place value. The last thing with the place value involves the rounding. Okay, and so you need to review chapter one and um, f do the sections involving chapter one, introduction to whole numbers. Here we have reading, writing, rounding, and ordering whole numbers. Okay, so that's part of something you need to refresh your mind with. We're not teaching this to second graders, but we have to have our place value down for college level. All right, I'm gonna let you go. We will see you on Friday.